When I think about my future, Daniel 2.0, what does he know that I don't know yet? It's great to know there are other ways that I don't have to be stuck to the phone, stuck to Zoom. There are other ways where I can, yeah, have more leverage and, and use my skills in, in ways where I can solve bigger problems for companies, because that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, what people say about you when you're not there oftentimes is overlooked by salespeople. But... but I mean, at the moment, what you're working on is on a couple of sales teams. You're getting into M&A uh, right now. Um, yeah. What do you and, and also investing uh, into real estate uh, yourself? Mm. Uh, mm. What, what do you think? I guess in the sales world, uh, you've been you've been in it for a little bit of time now. Uh, what do you think is, uh, I guess, the catalyst for you in venturing out and doing all of these other things? Mm. Yeah, well, it comes down to my love of learning. I actually studied philosophy when I was in, in university. And when I was a teenager, I, I wanted to be a writer. And I remember my friends at school that would make fun of me because I was like the, the bookworm. I was a, a nerd and I spent a lot of time in the, in the library. And I have some funny pictures of me, like being in the library. And I actually worked at some point as a library assistant and I just loved books. And so I started philosophy and it's funny because that's the meaning of philosophy. It's l loving wisdom, right? loving the the process of learning and knowing that you are not there yet that you are never always that that you are never there right there's always that next book that next step that next word that you want to learn and it reminds me of one of my favorite authors back then was um, an argentinian poet uh, borges and he had a a beautiful poem about like the universe is like a library and he's always like looking for that next aisle and that next book and that next thing that will spark his creativity and his curiosity. And so for me, like I fell into sales accidentally. I had a job as a wellness consultant and a yoga teacher before COVID. And then I lost that. And then I wrote a book. And through that book, I fell into the Facebook rabbit hole and I ended up in remote sales. But it was more through my curiosity of like, improving my communication skills and my leadership and obviously taking advantage of an opportunity I saw to support myself. But it, it comes down, down to my love of learning, right? And finding those opportunities for me to, how can I, when I think about my future, like that Daniel 2.0, what does he know that I don't know yet? So as how can I mm -hmm. reverse engineer that? And that's why I'm getting into, yeah, real estate uh, and an M&A and trying to just be a student again, right? And getting into sales <laughs> management in, in a similar cool. way. It's really because I see how my brain lights up when I'm in those environments, when I'm connecting with you and I can learn more about systems and SOPs and, and how to lead others and empower others. So for me, like I don't have a, a big vision about sales or like I didn't uh, and I never imagined uh, growing up being in sales, but it, it was accidental. But the main thing is really that love of learning and the curiosity towards learning new skills, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah, for sure. And, you know, your transition from being on the phones doing sales to then sales management, being able to create income, you know, without necessarily taking taking calls. When, when did you get started in sales management? Like what was your transition like? Because I know that's kind of a pathway where a lot of, uh, you know, sell, you know, especially in remote sales, it's kind of like the, the obvious pathway uh, to go down. How did you get your start mm -hmm. in sales management? Like how long ago? Yeah, it's still fairly recent. It was only late December that I connected to the first opportunity. And through my network, through my reputation, someone referred me to 
a team in the Latin American market. And it aligned in the sense that they needed someone who already had a network of closers and setters and who could recruit them and train them and kind of plug them in quickly. So I already had that. And someone who well spoke Spanish and, and because I'm from Latin America, I, I have a network in that space as well. But interestingly enough, uh, through mm. my my own research and with my wife, we're wanting to get into like real estate, as, as specifically short term rentals, and so that's exactly what that offer was about. So everything aligned, mm. and yeah, that was the first experience with sales management, recruiting a team, and negotiating good terms in, in terms of like uh, revenue share and also me stepping into the the process having those conversations closing deals myself and then mm. setting up the system so that they don't rely on me but they can also scale that and and obviously i can uh, consolidate that skill as a manager and then transfer it to other opportunities which like what i'm doing now with an M&A firm, I'm basically helping them build an in-house sales team and mm. uh, and implement some of those management skills. Yeah. So it's fairly recent. That's so cool. And just scratching the surface. Mm. But it's great That's to awesome. know that there are other ways that I don't have to be stuck to the mm. phone, stuck to Zoom <laughs> all day long. But there are other ways where I can, yeah, have more leverage and, and use my skills in in ways where I can solve bigger problems for companies, because that's what it's all about, I think. Mm. Yeah, that's so cool. It's a great story, um, you know. And and before before that, so because you mentioned, you know, like they they brought you on because of your reputation uh, and and your skills. What what mm -hmm. was the reputation that they brought you in for? Were you closing a, a lot of deals, or um, you know, you just work really well with people? Uh, what do, what do you think some of those traits are that gave you that that reputation? Yeah, it was quite unexpected because it was through an old like colleague that I had met through some sales course like two years ago, and I wasn't really in touch with that person. But I guess that person had mm. been following my journey and consuming my, my content, mostly on Facebook. And so they had an idea that I was doing well, and they found this company, and they knew that they were looking for someone who could help them build and grow their sales team. And so they thought about me, they connected me to the business owner and that's how the referral took place and that's how the opportunity opened. And so, yeah, it brings me back to the importance of personal branding, creating content, building your, your reputation because if you're a one person business but nobody knows about you, it's gonna be a bit tough to to create those opportunities. So um, one of the mm. things that I've been yes. focusing on is just try and stay consistent with, with my content and my brand and, and building good relationships. And obviously I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. There've been uh, situations where I've also messed up and, and that's fine. But overall, you know, I, I want to be very honest and upfront with my content, the things that I'm, uh, learning the mistakes that I'm making. And I think that people resonate with that and and it builds trust. And so that's the reason why this opportunity opened up because someone referred me to it. And, and then also through you, yeah. new opportunities come up. So yeah, definitely through my personal branding and through my, my reputation, which is at the end of the day, what people uh, say about you when you're not there. I think that mm. oftentimes is overlooked by salespeople, but yes, it, it's, it's, I think again, it's, it's good thing. drawing attention, right? And if nobody knows about you, it's, mm. it's going to be a bit tough. What do you think, Pat? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think that's a great point uh, about, you know, the content and like, so it's not just necessarily the skill. It's like people knowing about what you're capable of, of, of doing as well through your personal branding and content. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be curious to, Kind of, kind of see your perspective on it. I mean, I've seen, I've seen your content, and it's, it's pretty clear to me, um, you know, what it is that that you do and and you're capable of doing. Um, but maybe take me a step back. Like, what sort of content 
kind of led up to this point because you know when you're not managing a team uh what sort of content can you bring to the table a lot of sales people are um that, that that i that i can see their content sometimes i i don't really understand like what the content like who it's for or what purpose it's serving other than sharing which is great mm-hmm. um but if there's other things that you can benefit from you know like what what did that look like um for you because yeah like i said now your content is is pretty clear it's pretty obvious right mm-hmm yeah yeah it's a good question because i mean i think that it's if you're not posting any content at all i mean that you're just doing uh, yourself a disservice so it's better something is better than nothing right but if you can be more intentional Mm. and have a clear idea of who are you writing it for and what's the reason behind it i think that's even more powerful so in my case since last year i got more clear on i want to work with business owners I want to work with people that already have an established offer. And so I've been Mm -hmm. writing more towards those people and sharing my, my wins and my, my journey where I can see the connection and how I could add value to them. So the fact that I've been a top producer at a few companies and so sharing that, that journey, knowing that people that may look for top producers may resonate with that and Mm -hmm. Yeah, being more intentional. I think that that's so cool. you don't you don't need to have a hundred percent clarity, but you can have a sense of the direction that you wanna that you wanna head towards, the people that you wanna work with. In my case, business owners, investors, that kind of thing. So I try to speak more t- towards them, and yes, and also sharing your journey. I mean, you don't need to be an expert, so to speak. You can talk about your journey, your learnings, the ups and downs, and how are you evolving as a um, as a professional? What kind of skills are you uh, mastering? And and I think your audience will start filtering mm. uh, on their own and and seeing whether or not you're valuable to them. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great way to be. I think, uh, really. I mean, it's it's really important as you, especially as you as you're learning. I think what's what you're showing is that it's possible to have that and adapt uh, a style. Um, I think it's there's not a lot of competition out there for right now. Anyway, I think there'll be more uh, to come. Um, one thing that that is interesting is uh, the Spanish market, right? And I, and I've mm-hmm. um, not really been. Because uh, it's not my background, so I've not really been privy to what yeah. uh, what's necessarily needed or the transition. But uh, but now that I've been open to it, um, I see it more and more, and maybe the opportunities are there, and and a lot of uh, people have brought it up now. Um, mm. Where do you see it? Where do you see either offers from, let's say, the US, UK, um, other you know very strong. Uh, English-speaking countries moving into the Spanish market or actual offers in the Spanish market and uh, p- potentially either sales reps or sales managers being able to to, to make the most out of those um, opportunities. Where do you see the opportunity in, in all of those? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's those are emerging markets and there's huge potential there. Obviously, it's important to adapt to the... Um, Again, to speak their language, right? Because something that I learned with the Latin American offer and speaking to uh, to Latin American families, for instance, that they're interested in getting into real estate, starting a cash short term rental business, and their decision making process is different. Like they, mm-hmm. like family is a huge value for them, right? So that's something that needs to be taken into account in the conversations and on the sales calls. And it's not as, yes. um, I guess, individualistic as some, like maybe the US or the UK or some other countries, where it's just one decision maker mm-hmm. and it's just my goals, this is what I want, and, and this is why I want it. So you got to take into account a few different dynamics, but as long as you adapt to those cultural differences, I think that it's a huge emerging market and whether it's adapting 
offers in English to that market or creating offers from scratch in Spanish. Mm. I mean, it's a, it's a blank canvas, really. I think that you can create whatever you want with, mm. uh, with people who are looking for more alternatives and, and then they look up to, to the U S and to Europe for uh, inspiration and for ideas. And, and it's really ingrained in, in the psyche. Uh, almost as a mm. as a promised land, you know. Like I left my country many years ago because I was looking for better opportunities. And if we can give the skills that are more common in the U.S. or or Europe or other countries, if we can transfer those skills to emerging economies. Then the the work ethic and the the drive is there. We just need to connect the people with the with the right opportunities so i think there's huge potential there for sure and i know mm. people that are starting offers there and um, it's very interesting and also learning from the mm. mistakes that people have done with with marketing or uh, fake promises or, like people in, in latin america for instance they're they're very cautious they're very because they're used to looking over your back and so mm, we're, yes. we're, we're, we're very smart in that sense, and we're not going to buy into, into marketing BS. But if we find someone that we truly resonate with, who comes across with authenticity, who's relatable, who has a, a powerful story, we're very trusting people as long as it's a mm. good message. So I think that there's a lot of potential for sure. Yeah. What about, yeah. What about you, Daniel? What's... Uh... What's the plan from here? So you you know you've gone from being able to you know like sell really well and be on the phones to then leverage those skills mm -hmm. so that others are doing the work for you you know in in sort of management and you're now looking at uh, kind of what I understand your future plans in in M and A and being able to invest. What's um yeah what's the plan for for Daniel from from here on in? Yeah, it's interesting because sometimes. I think, well, I personally overthink my, my plans and for sure that there's a vision around building wealth through M and A and, and more investments and, and building wealth for my family. And, and that's great. And that's exciting. But on a more personal level, I think for me, it's really about like understanding myself, right? Like on a daily basis, what do I really want? How do I want to feel? what kind of things I want to learn and, and how do I want to grow? Who do I want to mm. become like that? It's more like that self inquiry. Yes. And, and, and that's what I'm really focused on and what I'm passionate about. It's understanding myself mm. because I've made the mistake of chasing money or different things and then getting them and then realizing, well, not too sure why I did that in the first place, right? And so um, <laughs> staying connected to, yeah, who I really am, my values, how I want to feel, the things that are important to me. And, and it's a never-ending game, right? Uh, but that, that's the cool thing about sales. Mm -hmm. that it's primarily, I think, it, it, it's an inner game. And it's really about understanding yourself, what kind of skills you want to learn, who do you want to become, and... And I think the other things take care of themselves. As long as you have that clarity yeah. and that integrity with yourself, then in my experience, the other things kind of unfold as a, as a byproduct. Yeah. 